Hi everyone, it's Deacon Steve Greco. And Marianne. And, and welcome, welcome to, to the, the Bible, Bible and you. you. Well, we're into let, the, let me guess, you're excited. I'm excited. And we're into the seventh Sunday of Easter, which also is Ascension Sunday. And so we're covering the seventh Sunday of Easter readings. And some of you may hear some of the Ascension readings, but basically we're getting close to the end of the Easter season. In fact, the next weekend is Pentecost, which is really exciting. But these readings are really, really exciting. You know, I, I love Easter season because we're in the Acts of the Apostles. I know, I love Acts. Well, let's start in prayer because I can hardly wait to start. Okay, in the name of the Father, and Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, we love you and praise you. And we ask, Lord God, that during this Easter season, as we complete it, we remember what Easter is all about that you rose from the dead, that we may have eternal salvation, that you've broken through the chains, the bondage of sin for us. Lord, may we praise you and worship you in all that we do. May we glorify you in all that we do through the intercession of our Blessed Mother, through the power of the Holy Spirit. And I bless you all in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Well, you know, we're going to read Acts 1, and in the, these three verses, we're given a glimpse of how the apostles, uh, disciples, and the Blessed Mother spent 10 days between Jesus' ascension and Pentecost. So, actually, this reading takes place after ascension, but um, we're not doing the reading of ascension, but I think it's worth talking about a little bit. Jesus kept appearing after his resurrection to the apostles and disciples in a human visible form for 40 days. He, he, you know, he, he kept appearing and you think, why would, what was he waiting for? He couldn't get his point across by now. <laughs> you know, you kind of think about that. And, and yet there was a reason for it, which I think we'll hear through these readings that, that it was the same reason why sometimes we must wait uh, for, for God uh, to do what God wants us to do. I, I guess I would say. So, uh, you know, we, we can't give away what we don't have. And so the apostles needed to take this time <clears throat> and and be fed with the right. Holy Spirit and and stuff. So who did he appear to? You know, we talked about. Well, that's in here. Yeah. Oh, you mean all the people he appeared to? I don't have that list on me right well, now. Well, what I'm saying is that did he appear to the Pharisees? Oh, I see what you're saying. No, he appeared to people who believed in him. I think that's Whoa. an interesting fact. Isn't that yeah. fascinating? Because, I, I mean, he could have gone to Pilate and go, look at it. Didn't work. Here I am. He or could, Herod, he, he could have gone to all the leaders, yeah, the Jews that were the leaders, didn't. the Pharisees, the Sadducees, whatever. But he appeared to the believers. He appeared. And, you know, again, we're going to see that in Pentecost. And, right. you know, but it's important well, because right. when we believe in him, Jesus appears to us in different ways and formats. Right. And he is also preparing them to do what he the great mission to go out and spread the word. So he's not interested in just going to the, the guys that didn't believe him. Look, at I, I, I didn't die. He's interested and having the word spread about who he is and he came for salvation for everyone and so he's preparing his disciples and, and apostles to do this and he's preparing the first the church as well a reading from the acts of the apostles after jesus had been taken up to heaven the apostles returned to jerusalem from the mount called olivet which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they entered the city, they went to the upper room where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these devoted themselves with one accord to prayer, together with some women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, the first thing I uh, want to point out is the list. He lists all the apostles and he says, and the women and the mother Mary were there. So these are all the people that followed him around in, in his missions sure. and, and going around. And we always hear Peter's name main, named first. 
And that's really because Peter is going to be in the head of the church. And so he's considered the head and his name is. And um, upon this rock, I shall build my yeah. church, right? Yeah. And then it says, you know, they all gathered. They were obedient because Jesus had said to do that, to go back to Jerusalem. And they stayed in the upper room. And the upper room is where he had the Last Supper, where he initiated the the sacrament of um, uh, Holy Eucharist. Yes. And uh, it will be where uh, Pentecost is. So he's he's told them to go stay there. And you know where else where? it is? It will be when Marianne and Steve Greco, oh. along with <laughs> Father Jacob Shea, will be in Jerusalem uh Actually, December 28th through, we'll be leaving the 27th, arriving on the 28th through January 5th. And we will be going to what they believe is the upper room where Jesus and the apostles right. were. The upper room was a, was a house, and it was actually four levels. It would have the basement where they stored the food and, and kept things cool. And then they had the next floors where they did business. And then the next floor was where they had their home, essentially. And then they had the rooftop. And, and we believe that it was on... Uh, not on the rooftop or in the basement, but one on those other floors, probably the, where their home was, where they would have this big meal. And it was, it was all like one big room. They didn't have partitions. It was, what is it, open concept, shall I say? There you go. Well, <laughs> you know, like, you know a lot, four floors and, and everything. I know, yeah. And you're gonna, we're going to learn a lot, right, when we're on this Well, you trip don't see all four pilgrimage. floors, but it is up high. so you Yeah, know, you walk up yeah. these stairs yeah. up to the top, which is pretty amazing. Yeah. I, I really want to get into this. Uh, yeah, they go all ahead. devoted themselves with one accord to prayer. One accord. One accord. They Not prayed. Not twelve in, accords. No. They okay. they were there to prepare themselves for the Holy Spirit. They prayed together to prepare for the Holy Spirit to come together with some of the women, Mary, Mother, and Jesus, and and those were the ones that accompanied them, as I said. And I think that's so important because. That's where they're going to use the time. Jesus wants them to be prepared in their heart and their soul to receive the Holy Spirit and to go out and spread the word. And it you can't do it with nothing. You have to feed yourself and you have to learn to have a relationship with God so you know exactly what he's calling you to do. And this is what they're trying to do. Um, get in touch with God. Amen. Amen. Now this word brothers. Yes. Tell me about that. Well, it's interesting. You know, this is really a debatable thing between the Protestants and the Catholic. Did Jesus have brothers? And this is the stance of the Catholic church. And I, I really believe this to be the truth. Brothers and sisters of Jesus as has been mentioned many times in the, in the gospels. Um, the term brothers and sisters uh, in Hebrew and Arabic, the Arabic, there are no words. You know, they just don't have that word for brother or sister. So the word that is used for brother and sister is the same word that you would use for cousin or someone close to the family. Right. And so uh, all, all those who belong to a clan, clan or tribe would be a, a brother or a sister. So I, I think it's interesting because people say, oh, it says right there, he has brothers. But we forget that the language back then didn't have all the words to describe right. what they are. And I, for me, one of the things that I learned, I think I mentioned it in one of our Bible studies here, was that um, right before Jesus died, he turns to... So he turns to John, John and, and if he had brothers, he'd be probably turned to his brothers, right? right. But he turns to John. And he says, this is your mother. Right. Because, behold your mother, behold your son. Because you know. in, Jew, in the tradition of the day, a, a widow woman with no uh, son had no rights at all. And she would be just left with nothing. And right. so he was taking care of her by saying, you know, take care of my mother. And he wouldn't have done that. No, he would have turned to his, had his blood brother if, yeah. he, if he had one. And even if he had and a, clearly he did not. If he had a sister who was married, it would be her husband who would take in Mary. So it's pretty clear to me. But, um, you know, just so you know, when it says brothers, it's it's extended family there. Amen. Yeah. Um, this is, this is one of the best prayers in a sense that's happening that they're doing right now. And it's like, what are they praying for? 
And well, you know, they're praying for direction from God. That's what we need to do today. Yeah. They're simply waiting out for hearing what, what are we supposed to do? Amen. And I think that's so important. The most important uh, lesson here for Christians today is that we need more prayer. Even we get so busy and we think we're serving God and everything. But what's really important is to take time out of your, your busyness and even work for God and go into prayer and meditation and, and get a strong relationship with the Lord. So you can hear exactly what he wants you to do. Amen. 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 Yeah. Fuego. It's so important. Yeah. You are on fire. Yeah. Um, so moving on. Okay. Responsorial Psalm. I believe that I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. I believe I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom shall I be afraid? I believe that I shall see, see the, the good things, things of the, of the Lord, Lord in the, in the land, land of, of the living. living. One thing I ask the Lord, this I seek to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate his temple. I, I believe, believe I, I shall, shall see, see the good things of the Lord in the land of the, of the living. living. Hear, O Lord, the sound of my call. Have pity on me and answer me. Of you my heart speaks, you my glance seeks. I, I believe, believe that I, I shall see, see the good things, things of the Lord, Lord in the, the land, land of the living. living. Well, this is interesting. I should, I believe I should, let's see. I believe I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. And then it says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. What is light other than it's defining things, how we view things. And, and light often brings things that are defective or it brings more detail right. to things. And so he says, the Lord is my light. He's, He's the one that shows me what things are like, good and evil and, and sin. And, and so it says, whom should I fear if he's showing me this? And the Lord is my life's refuge. It's, it's my refuge, my safe place. Amen. I love that. Whom should I it's be so afraid of? It's so emotional yeah. and intense. Yeah. And he says, I have no fear walking in the world because I follow God's light. I can see things as God sees them. Hear, O Lord, the sound of my call. Have pity on me and answer me, you know, that I may gaze in the loveliness of the Lord and come. come template the temple um this is david talking but it's also you know that we we take time when we meditate to see the loveliness or the goodness of god you know get out of the world it's full of evil for for uh, time each day and and present yourself before the god and and he will answer oh that you my heart speaks do you glance at what i seek that you'll hear me and that i will live in the the house of the lord all the days of my life yeah. you know and psalm 27 and psalm 23 read them both just get out your bible and read them both psalm 27 that we're covering right now you know there're 14 verses um, this particular responsorial psalm doesn't cover all of it, but you know, it's, it's very, very powerful. I mean, one of the verses it doesn't cover is verse 14, wait for the Lord, take courage, be stout hearted, wait for the Lord. You know, is that there are times that we rush, but the Lord is there for us. He is our light, our salvation. Right. He is and our refuge. That just goes with the first reading. You know, they, they, yeah. they all were in the upper room waiting on the Lord to show them and, and to get close and, and focusing on God. But since we're talking about two of the important Psalms, Psalm 27, that is the, the response to Psalm, but go read Psalm 23 over and over again. The Lord is my shepherd. There's nothing I lack. Can't go wrong with that one. And the last verse, uh, goodness and mercy will pursue me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And again, hope and encouragement and, you know, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Who should I fear? I mean, those things are so powerful right. to really meditate on. So. If you meditate on the Lord, rather than being sucked up by all the busyness of the world, you're going to find that peace and joy. And you're going to see, see things in a new light. And that is the light of God. 
So this, yeah. this next reading from mm -hmm. First Peter is addressed to Christians living in cities in Asia Minor, where Christians were very much in the minority. It, it really wanted to be encouraging and, and really let people know that they're not alone, that they've been connected to Jesus, they are con connected to Jesus, they are blessed, and no matter if anyone is you know, really persecuting them, insulting them, that Jesus is there for them. So let's take a listen. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, rejoice to the extent that you share in the sufferings of Christ, so that when his glory is revealed, you may also rejoice, rejoice exultantly. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the spirit of glory and God rests upon you. But let no one among you be made to suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or intriguer. But whom, whoever is made to suffer as a Christian should not be ashamed, but glorify God because of the name, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We must always live worthy lives of the name in the name of Christian being Christians. Um, that way, we give glory to God. They see God through us, and and you know it, this one line. Uh, but don't but don't suffer because you've done something wrong. If you're going to suffer, suffer for the Lord. That you know you're doing something for the Lord. It's they are going to have very difficult times now. We do have martyrism today, but um, we even in our normal lives suffer because we are Christians and, and sometimes in our own family. Yeah. So sometimes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so bottom bottom line is this. Read Matthew 5, read the, the Beatitudes and look at the eighth Beatitude. Eighth Beatitude says, blessed are they who are persecuted, for theirs is the kingdom of God. And it goes on to say, you will be insulted, you will be persecuted. Yeah. And it is a litmus test. It is. If you're not being persecuted, are you really proclaiming God? Jesus is Lord? Jesus is Savior? You know, the world doesn't like that. The world, because it's light, it's the light of God. And so what the world will do is the world will try to throw stones at it. You know, Steve, it's, it's always difficult to resist temptations around us on all sides, and it's hard to accept our trials tearfully. Mm -hmm. You know, all of us get into that. Um, it's human nature not, not to, you know live by our life alone. But uh, here we're, we're being told, you know, Christ is with us. And he arranged, he made arrangements before he, he left, let's say. Yeah. And he's saying, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and guide you and, and be your paraclete. And so he did not leave us orphans. He left us with that help. Yeah. Uh, and, and it is hard sometimes when we're going through those trials. Uh, but, you know, we have that divine grace. And the Holy it, yeah. Spirit. You know, and, and while well, this is St. Peter, St. Paul says the same things mm -hmm. in yeah. which he will say, if you suffer with Jesus, if you die with Jesus, you will rise with Jesus. So you take on sufferings that Jesus took on, in a sense. You take on, you know, that cloak. You die with him, die to the flesh. But you rise again with him inter until eternal salvation. You know, when I go through really difficult times, sometimes if it's been unbearable, it, it just helps me to think this is like a blink of an eye, even though it seems like eternity when you're going through a difficult time. Uh, but to know that you're going to be in um, heaven, eternal life forever with the Lord. Amen. Um, it's something to hang on to uh, when you're going through very difficult times. Wow. And this is, you know, as we get into the gospel reading, we talk about the eternal life here too. Yeah. These 11 verses here that are coming up are part of the prayer that Jesus prayed at the Last Supper. Yes. And so this is so a famous. John 17 yeah. is very famous. Very, very good prayer. He prayed for him himself as well as he prayed for the apostles and all those that would be uh, uh, preaching and, and, and spreading the word that they would know that uh, the people would come to know the true God and, and son and his son. Jesus uh, 
raises his eyes. Well, let's read it first. I'm getting carried away. Yeah, you're getting all excited. I know. But, I'm really excited. But I, I just want to say that many people feel that John 17 is one of the most important chapters of all the New Testament and the Gospel of John. I can see that. The Lord yeah. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Give glory to your Son so that your Son may glorify you. Just as you gave him authority over all people, so that your son may give eternal life to all you gave him. Now this is eternal life, that they shall know you, the only true God, and the one whom you sent, Jesus Christ. I glorified you on earth by accomplishing the work that you gave me to do. Now glorify me, Father, with you, with the glory that I had with you before the world began. I revealed your name to those whom you gave out gave me out of the world. They belong to you and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you gave me is from you because the word you gave to me, I've given to them and they accepted them and truly understand that I came from you and they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for the ones you've given me because they are yours and everything of mine is yours and everything of yours is mine. And I have been glorified in them. And now I will no longer be in the world, but they are in the world while I am coming to you. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, the first uh, comment I want to say when he says he's praying like it's a conversational prayer to, to the Lord, really. I think that's right. neat to, to know that he, he can just say these things. But he says, give glory to your son so that your son may glorify you. You know, give glory to me so I may glorify you great prayer for us to say right yeah we can say that prayer as well and um it goes on to say um let's see so that your son may give eternal life for all that gave him uh now this is eternal life that they should know you the only true god and the word know in the bible doesn't mean just intellectually know there's mm -hmm. a lot of people out here that intellectually know who god is right but he's saying to know that word means in the bible to have experienced it yes. or to have experience with a person so he's really praying for everyone to have a personal relationship with god yeah this is such a this is a message to all of us of how we should be living that Jesus is watching over us, protecting us. But as you mentioned, we have to be one with the Lord. Uh, we have been given to Jesus and Jesus is watching over us. The father is watching over us and we need to glorify God in the way that we live. Yeah. And then, you know, later on he says, I pray for them. I think it's, you know, he's still praying for us. Jesus is still praying for us. I he intercedes that. for us at the he right does. hand of the Father. Right. And, and so we have to remember that I do not pray for the world, but the ones that you have given me, the ones that who believe. And and like he said, it's like he's, this is right before um, the Holy, well, before his resurrection, before he dies, actually. He's setting this all up. He's yeah. praying for us before it happens. And he's still doing that. Um, I just, I just love that. I think, you you know, he really, really says we're we're one. We, you know, you've given me these people. I love them, and and I want to be with them. Uh, he did everything. You know, he didn't have to come down from heaven. No, he didn't you have know? to come down and suffer and die this horrific death. Uh, but he did because yeah. God knew that Jesus had to take on the sins of the world. Right. You know, and that's what this Easter season is all about. And show us is recognizing love. that. Jesus took on the sins of the world and broke through sin, broke through death, and rose again that we may have eternal salvation. It's, I, I think we need to think about that more. I think we forget it in our daily lives. But, you know, he, he came out of his comfortable position and went through torture just so because he loves us so much, he wants to see us in eternal life with him. It's so important. He's not going to desert us. He's still going to be there. We may turn our backs on him, but he's not there. He's right there if we just but talk to him. Well, we need to talk to him. The other thing that's so important is recognizing that Jesus loves us unconditionally. 
and he will not let us go. He's not going to desert us. He gives us the Holy Spirit. And even though we may get discouraged at times, Jesus will pick us up. Jesus will lead us to reconciliation, lead us back to him. And, you know, it's amazing how much he loves us because he doesn't let anybody go. Can I tell you a quick story? Okay. Then I want to talk a little bit about Ascension a little bit more. Okay. Uh, the quick story is I was uh, at a restaurant today and the Lord wanted me to ask this man. His name uh, was actually Ascension, believe it or not. His was, name was His Ascension. name was Ascension. Wow. And so I asked him, are you Catholic? And he said, yes. And then he said, but I don't go to church. And I said, I'm here to tell you that Jesus loves you unconditionally and is welcoming you to the church. He lived in Garden Grove. I work at Christ Cathedral in Garden Grove. There are three Spanish masses. And I said, there are three Spanish masses. You know, he spoke Spanish as first language. I said, they're waiting for you with open arms. And that's really what John 17 is about, is the fact that Jesus is waiting for us, protecting us, interceding for us, praying for us. You know, and, and going back to the Ascension story, he's leaving them. Uh, we're celebrating the fact that he's going to heaven. And you can see they were all close to him. And they, then he died and they were discouraged. And then he's alive and they're, they're maybe thinking, oh, he's going to stick around. Right. But he says, no, I have to go because that's your line. I have to go because then the Holy Spirit will come. Right. And so he wanted him to have the gift of the Holy Spirit, this tool to, yes. to live in a, a, a world that's very difficult. And But he's not leaving us orphan. And and so he, he's going up and, you know, it's just, you can yeah. see how they need encouragement. But the closer, and if they take time to prepare themselves as we take time to prepare ourselves, we can understand more why we have to wait and, and listen to what God has in plan for us. Because the world will just keep us so busy that we don't think about it or we just don't uh, believe that God's still with us. The world, you know, the devil tries to con yes. confuse us in that. And sometimes we feel alone. He's absolutely, we are not alone. We're not alone. In fact, um, some of you may hear the gospel reading of the Ascension, and which is out of Matthew 28, of which he makes disciples of all nations. But it's the last verse of this gospel that re refers this to what you're really saying. This is really important. That behold, I'm with you always until the end of the age. And so the point is, what, what the message is, is he will never desert you. He will never let you go. He will be there for you if you want him. The only way that you won't be with Jesus is if you don't want him, if you reject him, if you say, I don't want Jesus at all now or anytime. But, oh, it makes me cringe just even saying that. Bottom line is that Jesus, we're made to be with Jesus forever. We're his adopted children. Yes. And that's the, really the message of Easter and the message of Ascension is that, behold, I will be with you until the end of the day. That was the message of John 17 that we just covered oh, is that he's, he's praying, praying for us. He's praying, praying. And now I like it to think like if we turn our backs, if I turn my back to Steve, I couldn't see him. And I might be able to convince myself you weren't even there. But if I if I called out to you, you would answer me. And that's what Jesus is. If we turn our backs and we go kind of astray away from God's uh, will and way, Jesus is right there. Amen. We just have to turn around Amen. or call out to him. So this is the last Sunday of Easter. Next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday, which, of course, is an unbelievably exciting, honoring the descent of the Holy Spirit. And you can celebrate Pentecost Sunday with us at St. John the Baptist Catholic Church in Baldwin Hills. It's an all-day event starting at 8 a.m., St. John the Baptist and Baldwin Home will have unbelievable speakers, Deacon Larry Oney, his wife Andy Oney. I will be speaking. Uh, lots of great, great speakers will be there all day for English, all night for Spanish, including Noel Diaz. And again, many, many great speakers there. So it's actually nearly a 24-hour event 
for I thirst. The Onis are flying in from New from Orleans. New Orleans. New Orleans. New Orleans. So, so I hope to see you next Saturday at 8 a.m. in Baldwin Park, St. John the Baptist. Go to Jesus Thirst for America. Dot com to register. May Almighty God bless you with every spiritual blessing. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This is Deacon Steve Greco. And Mary Ann. And you've, you've been, been on, on the Bible, Bible and, and you. you. God bless everyone.